Hey guys, welcome back to another Bible Studies for Life. This is the winter series. I can't believe it's December, y'all. Come on. Look, we're going to be in Psalm 33 today. Go ahead and turn there. Let me start with a question. As always, when have you felt a healthy fear? Anybody? Going once, going twice, a healthy fear. Is there such a thing? You're going to learn today. The fear of God gives us the foundation to face all other fears. That sounds like a healthy fear to me. No? Maybe? Well, let's dig in. Let's see what the study has to show us today. Look, because God is holy, listen, he is altogether separate from the infinitely above all people who are sinful. He's above all this, right? He deserves our reverence and obedience. Look, scripture sometimes refers to people as being legitimately terrified in their fears, such as when they encounter angels, right? Some people are terrified. You hear that in scripture all the time. People fall down in fear in front of angels, right? However, this isn't necessarily the way that uh, we're to see God, right? Now, listen to this quote from our study. It says, The fear of God helps us to look to Him in faith as we recognize His character. Now, this is from a video called A Wrong View of On the Fear of God by Paul Washer. Check out anything by Paul Washer. Amazing preacher straight to the point, to the Word of God every single time. But for our study today, Psalm 33, it is a praise song to the Lord written for a victory festival. Who doesn't like a party, right? Now, the psalmist calls on God's people to rejoice in the Lord, praise Him, and sing a new song. So let's look at 33, 6 through 9, if you guys would turn there with me. Verse 6, the heavens were made by the word of the Lord and all the stars by the breath of his mouth. Verse 7, he gathers the water of the sea into a heap and he puts the depths into storehouses. Verse 8, let the whole earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Verse 9, for he spoke and it came into being. He commanded it and it came into existence. All right, sounds like God's up to some big stuff. Let's break it down. The Psalms are a collection of Hebrew poetry used as both worship songs and prayers to God. So at times, life is overwhelming, is it not? And we might be tempted to think, well, no one can possibly understand what I'm going through. So Psalm 33 calls us to praise the Lord for who He is. Now, we don't know who wrote this psalm, but the psalmist points us to God's characteristics to his word, his creative power and work. Now, beginning in verse 6, the psalmist painted a poetic picture of the work of God. No one is like God, right? There's a song that I used to listen to all the time, There Is No One Like You. I think David Crowder song, maybe Matt Redman, somewhere in there. Um, But it says that no one is like God. He can speak things into existence. Do you know anybody that can do that? I didn't think so. See, the psalmist was genuinely in awe at the majesty and the magnitude of God. You guys ever been there? (laughs) What a crazy, awesome experience, right? When we become aware of God's glory and power as creator, our natural response should be like the psalmist, one of fear and awe. And see, we're When we are familiar with the idea of God's power in the story of creation, this truth sometimes doesn't impact us the way that it once did. You see, if this is the case, we need to slow down and think deeply about the power of God. Question number one, what is something about creation that sparks your interest? Question two, what's one thing you can do this week to follow the interest in order to grow in your awe of God? I like that. So, Psalm 33, 10 through 15. Let's dig in. Verse 10. The Lord frustrates the counsel of the nations. He thwarts their plans of all the people. Verse 11. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart from generation to generation. Happy is the nation whose God is Lord. The people he has chosen to be his own possession. Verse 13, the Lord looks down from heaven and observes everyone. Verse 14, he gazes on all the inhabitants of the earth from his dwelling place. And verse 15 says, he forms the hearts of them all. He considers all their works. Guys, that's some deep stuff. Let's dig in. When we can choose our own way or we can choose God's way. You ever been in that situation? Uh, Man, God needs me to do this, but... I really want to do that, right? But when our ways conflict God's ways, we can only be sure that those plans are going to ultimately 
fail. People in their pride often, listen to this, believe that they can live any way that they please. But why do they think that? Well, it's because we live in a culture that values individual freedom and pursuing our own happiness, right? People often express these values through pursuing maybe money or success, uh, which is good as long as we honor God with the choices that we make, right? Now, people often pursue happiness and success in ways that are totally contrary to the ways that God would have us live. That's where it becomes a problem. It might seem to work for a while, but ultimately, disobeying God is foolishness and will always lead to failure. So, living in wisdom involves following God's plan, meaning every time, not sometimes, not when you want to, not when it's Sunday morning, every time. So, when my dad used to call out my name, and usually when that was with the first name and the middle name, I knew that I probably needed to pay attention and see what he was saying and drop what I was doing no matter what. Anybody else? My kids are the same way, or at least they're working on it, right? I had a healthy fear of my father, right? A healthy fear of God causes us to also live in obedience to him, right? See, in verse 13 and 15, God is aware of everything because he cares for us and wants what is best for us. Now, for some, knowing God sees everything might cause us to fear, right? Now, that kind of fear... Um, will be a harsh punishment maybe for what we are doing or thinking or acting, right? But because God sees all of this, that's why that all of us, rather, that's why those thoughts may creep in, right? But look, when we live rightly, there should be a healthy fear associated with God seeing everything. And we should be encouraged knowing God is pleased with us. Now, additionally, God is kind and gracious and he forgives us when we turn from sin. He is not out to get us, right? Instead, he desires to extend his love and care for us. So considering this, we seek to live obediently in the way that pleases him. Here's a couple more questions to help us dig deeper in our study. Question three, why can we trust God with our plans? Mm, if you're a senior in high school, do you trust God with your future? Why? Question number four. Knowing that God sees everything, what keeps us faithful to him when it feels evil is winning. And question number five from our study. When have you seen selfish plans fail? So let's keep going. Psalm 33, 18 through 22, verse 18. But look, the Lord keeps his eyes on those who fear him, those who depend on his faithful love to rescue them from death and to keep them alive in famine. We wait for the Lord. He is our help and shield, verse 21, for our hearts rejoice in him because we trust in his holy name. In verse 22, may your faithful love rest on us, Lord, for we put our hope in you. Now, some people might be anxious or uneasy to know that the Lord keeps his eye on us, right? They might see God as saying, I've got my eye on you. I'm watching everything you're doing, right? Now, God is like a parent watching over his child. Now this is a kind of love that means that God will protect us when there is a threat. It also means that he will discipline us when we need it. Now in this Psalm, we see God's love and protection is similar. We sometimes make sinful choices that would bring harm to us, but God disciplines us to keep us from harm. Now. Seeing how God works on our behalf as our shield and provider should lead us to respond in love and in awe of him. It should also lead us to a sense of comfort and safety. You see, a key phrase that captures this uh, confident rest is in verse 20, and it says, We wait for the Lord. The idea of waiting in the original language refers to looking forward to something with a confident hope. You see, we all have that one friend who's always late. Um, is it you? I'm just saying. But God always fulfills the promises, right? And he's always on time. God's never going to show up late, right? As the psalmist began in verse 20 with reference to waiting on the Lord, he ended this section in verse 22 with a parallel statement. It says, we put our hope in you. See, we fear God in awe and of reverence because we know with full confidence that he protects and provides for us. 
how or what does discipline from God on a believer look like? Well, Hebrews 12, 5 and 6 also points to Psalm 3, 11 and 12. So check out those verses, but really comes down to correcting disobedience, our disobedience. Uh, it's the natural consequences of our sin, right? And now why does God discipline us? Why does he do that? Uh, to mature us because he loves us, and to grow us in our faith. So questions to dig deeper as we end our study. Question six, when have you experienced God's protection or provision in your life? And question number seven, what does it look like to fear God on a daily basis? And question number eight as we end our study, what is one step that you could take this week to depend more on God? Wow, could we not all take that step? You guys, remember that Scripture sometimes refers to people as being legitimately terrified in fear, such as when they encounter angels in Scripture, right? This isn't necessarily how we are to see God, but living in fear of Him means that we recognize His nature and power by living in awe with His, in reverence of Him. You see, there is one fear that is necessary and beneficial, and that's the fear of God. When we see God for who He is, meaning holy, righteous, and powerful, a proper fear should lead us to live differently in our day-to-day -day lives. Guys, I pray the Lord has been uh, speaking through this message and using this message as we kick off the winter series. Um, if you guys would, <clears throat> happy to be back with you guys next week as we talk about security instead of fear. We'll see you guys next time.